Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about postpartum skincare and this is inspired by a patient of mine who came in for a consultation and she had some concerns related to her skin because she wasn't understanding what was happening to her skin after she had a baby. So we had a consultation and it inspired me to make this video. So I'm going to be looking at my notes so if I'm not looking at the camera just don't be worried about that. But the bottom line is this patient, she's African-American or she has black skin and she was coming in, <clears throat> she was coming in because she was dealing with dryness in her skin and she also noticed dullness in her skin and she also noticed she was having like darkening in her skin or hyperpigmentation. She had already come in earlier for facial hair, which is something I'm not going to discuss in this video because I have other videos talking about facial hair and treating it with laser hair removal. But we're going to focus today on just skincare in general for people who have postpartum, who are in the postpartum phase of their life. All right, so <clears throat> before I go into like the skincare products that I recommend or not like the exact products, but like the class of products that I recommend for someone who is in the postpartum phase, I want to talk about a few things that can come up with your skin when you're going through the postpartum phase. Okay, so the first thing and the most common thing that people complain about when they're going through postpartum um, stages in their skin is that they complain about their skin being very dry. Okay, so there are two main reasons why your skin is going to be dry. The first reason is that your estrogen levels tend to be low when you're going through a post in the postpartum phase. So during pregnancy, your estrogen is really high. It's important for supporting pregnancy. But once you have the baby, it literally just drops. And that can affect so many different things in your skin. Um, primarily, it's going to affect the oil production so you can get like dry skin instead of being oily some other people get oily so we'll talk about acne in other people but a lot of people tend to get really really dry and so the other thing that happens is that when your estrogen is low it affects collagen production it, it affects elastin production and it affects the amount of hyaluronic acid that your skin is able to produce so you don't only get dryness you can also get dullness of your skin so those are two really important points um think of it this way if you're going through a postpartum phase and let's say you're breastfeeding it's almost like you're going through a menopause so i like to call the postpartum phase a pseudo menopausal stage and so your estrogen during that time frame is low because it's important to keep it low so that you can you can continue to breastfeed right so it takes time for your estrogen to go back to where it was before you had a baby and so during that time your skin is going to suffer so it's just important to understand that these changes tend to be due to low estrogen levels that are occurring after you had the baby so that's one thing the second thing that happens when you're breastfeeding that will cause your skin to be dry is the fact that while well, you're breastfeeding and so you are going to be losing a lot of water from your body that's going into your breast milk and so it's super important to be as hydrated as possible during the breastfeeding phase just so that you can help you help to support your skin Another important point when I mentioned the pseudo-menopausal state is that when you're going through that state, it's difficult for your skin to shed dead skin, okay? So you tend to accumulate more dead skin on your face and that is going to contribute to why your skin might look dull after you've had a baby. And so we're gonna then address like what you need to do with the skincare products to help address those problems, okay? So dull skin and dry skin, they kind of go hand in hand. They're related to estrogen. And we'll talk about how we, we're gonna address that. The second thing that happens during pregnancy for some people is that instead of getting dry skin, they get the reverse, they get acne. So they become more oily. And so it just depends on how your hormones are going to fluctuate. But for some people, the hormonal fluctuation, especially if cortisol is involved, which is really normal when you're going through a postpartum phase because you're not, you're not sleeping, it's a lot of stress, you tend to then get overproduction of oil 
and obviously if you have overproduction of oil or sebum that can then lead to acne so for some people they're going to get acne with pregnancy and so we're still going to talk about what you can do in those situations to help the acne that's safe for pregnancy not pregnancy that's safe while you're breastfeeding your baby okay and then the last thing that comes up, especially in skin of color, is that a lot of people complain about hyperpigmentation on the outer sides of their face, like the, the forehead, the corners of the face, and then the jawline. And so for some people, when they get pregnant, they get something called a mask of pregnancy, where like you get a lot of darkening in your skin. And it takes time for that mask of pregnancy to go away. So while you're in the postpartum phase, you're probably going to still have that mask because it's related to the changes in your hormones, estrogen and progesterone. And so for a lot of my patients, I always ask them to just kind of be patient with it. You probably want to wait until your postpartum, no, not postpartum, you want to wait until you're done breastfeeding before you try to address hormonal um, hyperpigmentation. But I will talk about what is the best thing to do in the meantime to help mitigate this issue, okay? So let's go into skincare for postpartum patients. So there are three things. Again, it always goes back to the core three of skincare. So you want to use a cleanser, you wanna use a moisturizer, and you wanna use sunscreen. So let's start with the cleanser. So I always recommend if you can find one cleanser that has um, that is both hydrating and exfoliating, then that's great. I have a I have one of my cleansers in the office does that. Um, but if you don't have that option, you can start with having a hydrating cleanser. So for example, um, I like La Roche Posay's hydrating cleanser, or you can use CeraVe's. Um, have a hydrating cleanser that you use to cleanse your skin, and then two times a week you want to have a um, an exfoliating cleanser. So you want to have a cleanser that has an acid in it. So you can choose salicylic acid if you're dealing with acne or not, um, or you can choose glycolic acid or lactic acid. The point is choose a cleanser that has an acid in it. And the reason this is important is because the acids are going to help with removing that dead skin that your body's having a hard time doing because your hormones haven't caught up to do its job, okay? So for example, if you're dealing with acne, I always recommend a salicylic acid cleanser. CeraVe has a good one that's like 2%. So you can use that twice a week in addition to your other cleanser as well. And that should help to uh, help with like the excessive oil production and prevent you from having acne flares. You can also use something like a glycolic acid cleanser. Um, you can find these over the counter. I think like um, Olay or Neutrogena, one of those like will have a cleanser that has glycolic acid. And so again, make sure the percentage is not high. So I would say no more than three or 4% for the cleanser. Use that and again, it's gonna help to exfoliate the skin. So you want your cleanser to one, be hydrating and two, be exfoliating. If you cannot find a cleanser that can do both, then get two separate cleansers and use the exfoliation step twice a week. And a little caveat about exfoliation, because a lot of people love to use things like um, scrubs to exfoliate the skin or like loofahs. On the face, I truly don't recommend this, especially in the postpartum phase, because your skin is very, very sensitive. And so instead of physically exfoliating your skin to remove the dead skin, it is better, in my opinion, to use a chemical exfoliant, which is what these cleansers are, and you know, you just put the, the, the cleanser on your skin and leave it on for a few minutes so that it can penetrate deep into your pores and do what it's supposed to do, which is cleaning out your pores, which is reducing the, um, the sebum production in your skin. So if you're gonna go for exfoliation, I would suggest choosing a chemical exfoliant rather than choosing a physical exfoliant. Okay, so that's that. And then the second point is your hydration. So you want to use a good moisturizer during this time, you're going to be very, very dry. It doesn't matter if you're oily or dry, 
you're still dry, if that makes sense. You know, one, you're dealing with decreased um, estrogen production, you're dealing with dehydration from breastfeeding if you choose to breastfeed. So it's important to make sure you find a good hydrating moisturizer. Um, it's the summer right now, so you might want to look for something lightweight, but ingredients that are good for hydration or keeping your skin moisturized will be hyaluronic acid based um, ceramides and glycerin. Those are three um, ingredients I look for for hydrating moisturizers. So that will be the second step. And then the third step is going to be sunscreen. Like, So sunscreen is very, very important, especially because I mentioned the mask of pregnancy. If you're going through any sort of acne or um, dealing with that mask of pregnancy, you don't want UV rays, especially UVA, to then come and make it worse, right? So if you have inflammation in your skin from acne, we know that the sun rays can make it worse. And as someone who has darker skin, you will then be prone to having hyperpigmentation. So it's so important to make sure that you're using sunscreen during this time, all the time, okay? Um, and all of the ingredients that I mentioned at those percentages shouldn't affect you as someone who is breastfeeding. Um, so those three things will be like the most important things that I would suggest. And one more point about sunscreen and why it's super important, especially if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, so North America, Europe, things like that, and you're Black, um, those areas tend to have more UVA penetration to the skin and UVA is going to be the type of um, UV damage that will cause premature aging. So it penetrates deeper into the skin and so it's going to affect your collagen, your elastin, your hyaluronic acid, which is already affected right now because you're in a postpartum phase. So you definitely want to make sure that you're using sunscreen to prevent that from happening so that you don't get worsening or worsening um, premature aging, which can happen strictly from the use of strictly from being in the northern hemisphere and being exposed to more UVA rays. All right. So again, to summarize, if you're dealing with um, postpartum, if you have if you're postpartum and you are dealing with skin issues such as dull skin, dry skin, or acne, then my recommendation is to use a cleanser that is both hydrating and something that is has an exfoliating component, either with salicylic acid or glycolic acid or lactic acid. Secondly, you want to use a moisturizer that is going to help because you tend to be very dry and dehydrated. And thirdly, you want to use sunscreen. And then obviously, if you can, try to decrease the amount of stress in your life. That's really hard to say because, you know, I've had two kids, so I know that that's not the best advice. But anywhere you can mitigate stress will be super, super duper helpful. Make sure you stay hydrated since you're breastfeeding. And um, eat as healthy as possible because, again, during this time frame, a lot of times we tend to hold on to weight, which... I'll talk about in another video when you're pregnant, you actually go through a state of insulin resistance that is a physiological insulin resistance. So you don't want to have insulin resistance continue because then that's also going to lead to problems with your hormones not getting regulated as fast as they should. So just a little spiel about um, postpartum skincare. I hope you found this helpful. I will leave my recommendations um, at the bottom. Some of them will be on Amazon. Some of them will be my skincare line. So check those out. And if you're in the DC metro area and you need help with your skin, my practice, Delight Medical Anesthetics, focuses on treating darker skin tones. So stop by if you need help and we will gladly help you. All right. I hope you found this video helpful. Um, have a great day. Bye.